super-rich are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. Tax giveaways for corporations and special interests to the bitter end. Sucked up to the wealthiest people in the country and corporations at the expense of middle-income people. I think it's a really, really good betting assumption there will be tax cuts for the wealthy and the corporations. We're going to be telling the billionaires and large corporations that they are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. Listen, Democrats and socialists like Bernie Sanders know the truth. They're playing a cynical class warfare game to stay in power, to hold their power in the D.C. swamp. They're out in force with the same attack lines and punch lines they've used for decades, never mind the facts. President Trump is planning to cut taxes for companies and small businesses, just like Bill Clinton advocated, just like John F. Kennedy advocated, just as Jimmy Carter said should happen. But Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer for the Democrats already calling the Trump tax plan Wealth fair, you get it? Joining me now, Swiss America Trading Chair Craig Smith. More obstruction, right, Craig? Boy, indeed. And I got to tell you, Emac, I wish you had set up a chalkboard and run your nails on it versus running that intro. I, I, I mean, tax cuts for the rich, give me a break. These people all know the reality. Our ta taxes, corporate taxes, Liz, are 10% are, are higher than communist China right now. And we want to reduce them to 20 percent, which is 1 percent higher than the U.K., 7 percent higher than Ireland. We want to become competitive. We've run out of monetary tricks to try and get this economy going. So right. now we're going to do the one thing we've been talking about for years, fiscal policy changes that will create growth. And the Republicans want to say tax cuts for the rich we're taking from the poor and giving. I am so sick of hearing yeah. that because, first off, it's a lie. And second off, economically, it's wrong. Craig, not not one of the Democrats we just showed on camera ever ran a business. They don't know anything about what it takes to create jobs. What are they getting wrong about this? You've run a business. What stops income you, inequality? Does government does the government create jobs to stop income inequality or do businesses? No, businesses do, Liz, and you know as well as I do. Like you, that was a great quote with John Kennedy. You know, best best uh, uh, welfare program is a job. Okay, and look, we started our company in 1982 with $50 in America, the greatest country in the world. And we've had an incredible successful run, and we're, we're grateful for that. And we've hired thousands of people over the years. And, and the reality is, is that you take natural resources, uh, and let's say like steel, you put it with a human resource called a human being, you put technology together and you build a steel girder and you sell it and you build a building with it, that's creating wealth. Not printing money off a printing press and trying to stimulate an economy back to growth. Government has never spent their way to prosperity. Right. And Ronald Reagan proved this. I was, I was lucky enough, Liz, to start mm -hmm. my business during the Reagan years. I saw the effects of what the tax cuts did. It gave us the ability to buy copy machines at the time. We weren't even in the computer age as, yeah. of, as, of, that, as of that moment. And all these different things that we were able, we were able to hire more people. We were able to do more advertising. We were able to increase our product lines. Right. And I'm telling you, Liz, I'm so excited about this. The only thing I'm negative about yeah. is Trump should have held on to 15 percent. It works for Germany. Germany's got a bustling economy. They have a 15 percent corporate tax rate. Unbelievable. UK, like there, you point, UK is 19. Ireland is 12 and a half. We should be a tax haven. Switching gears. Now, look at this, Craig. I don't know if you saw this. Here's the news. For the first time in years, the U.S. is rising in the global rankings for competitiveness. We will make America great again. We're going to make America great again. We will make America great again. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. This is happening pretty rapidly. The U.S. is now the second most competitive economy in the world in 2017, trailing only Switzerland. This comes from the World Economic Forum. Okay, here's what's happening, Craig. The regulatory rollback by Trump is helping. Those are facts. What do you think, Craig? You, no, yeah, you're absolutely right. And we're seeing tangible evidence of that every single day. And, but I want, to, I want to take Trump's statement, Liz. This is important. He said, we will make America great. He didn't say he would make America great. We, the people, when we get back to work, when we set our minds to things, Liz, 
I mean, this is, think about the Second World War. We went back to work as a nation, and this country is ready. The, 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 excuse the expression, the gun is loaded. All we need to do is ignite the bullet, and I believe this tax cut could do that. So I love the whole idea of 12, 25, and 35 percent rates. Yeah. I love the corporate tax. I wish it was 15 percent, but 20 percent, like Grover said, 25 percent for sub S. Uh, a sub a sub S chapter cor uh, cor corporations, yeah, I know which what you provide, mean. by the way, about seventy percent of the small jobs in this country right. coming out of recessions. Liz, I think this could be very exciting, and I hope Grover is right. I hope this gets passed in two and a half months, and we will see growth rates of four, five, and maybe six percent. Thank you, Craig Smith. Good to see you. Come back soon. Good seeing you. Check out this video of an angry Indianapolis Colts fan. Look what.